and we actually had some time to sit down with them and see what they thought about each other's chances. And that's going to wrap up the series. And Diz Demon goes on to the semifinals. My opponent is Dr. EP. I know he's a great player, but I think uh, I can still beat him. So he hasn't been able to just get that clock there moving. There we go. Like a boss gives it up. And it's the veteran Dr. Hippie that overcame. He is marching onwards. My next opponent will be Diz Demon. I don't know much about him, I've only seen his games on the side of Prolima and here. There will not be anything else, I think it's hard, I think it's hard. I think the, the hardest thing will be to just win the mirror match and yeah, don't make mistakes. He has also a good goal. I don't think he has a weak place to compare with my goal. The decks will be like even matchups. I think it's going to be a close game. Давай не будем ропить в этот раз. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hearthstone Championship Tour. This is the Europe Summer Championship. We're about to jump into the second semifinal of the day. It's Dr. Hippie versus Diz Demon. I'm joined by Brian Kibler. Hello. Kibler, we're about to uh we're about to bring it to them. Are we? We are. Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> Is that what they call it these days? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh, Diz Demon versus Dr. Hippie. We saw them talking about one another uh, in that piece a moment ago. Uh, Dr. Hippie, one of the returning players, one of the most experienced players in this tournament. Though Diz Demon, a very experienced player, despite the fact that he hasn't had HCT Finals experience before. Mm -hmm. He, I believe, was the player with the most or very nearly the most preliminary wins total uh, going into the summer season or after the summer season. He also had most of his points coming from Open Cups. Mm -hmm. uh, over 50% of his championship tour points came from Open Cups. So uh, definitely a player that's no stranger to tournaments in general. And, uh, you know, the French scene has produced a lot of good players. And there's a lot of fan support for the French scene. I actually did a, a brief Twitter poll this morning who people were rooting for to win. And uh, when I checked it, uh, not too long into it, you know, several hundred votes, and Diz Demon had half of the vote. There are a lot of French <laughs> supporters out there who are rooting for him. So we will see if their, uh, their support brings him through to the final past Dr. Hippie. All right, well, let's go into game number one here. It's going to be Diz Demon on the Shaman which was instrumental in his win against Grey J yesterday, as we saw towards the end of that series. And Dr. Hippie going to try and get a win with his Tempo Mage, yeah. a deck that he says he played <laughs> very well. It's, this is the deck that uh, Dr. Hippie was admittedly not as experienced with going into this event. And he felt like the Freeze Mage, which he was known for, would lead him to being too predictable. And he felt like it wasn't necessarily in a great position right now. Though, I mean, we do see the other finalists so far, George C., He's playing Freeze Mage. We'll see if Tempo Mage swap works out for Dr. Hippie. All right, well, this is sort of a real test here. Uh, this is a really good hand for Dr. Hippie, but the thing about Tempo Mage is a really good hand doesn't guarantee you a good early board state. And uh, an interesting choice even right off the bat, going with the Mana Worm over the Babbling Book, uh, especially since there are uh, quite a few cards that would punish a turn one Mana Worm in this, this scenario. One thing about this, there are, as you mentioned, a number of things that can punish it, like a Abusive Sergeant, which you see Diz Demon has in his hand, a Flame Tongue Totem, which can remove it. But if your opponent plays one of those cards this turn, you're not really upset because they're not playing Totem Golem. Because mm -hmm. if, if your opponent has to play off curve to remove your minion, it's generally working out pretty well for you because your opponent isn't able to keep that aggressive posture which they prefer. And Diz Demon, with the Abusive Sergeant in hand, chooses not even to play it. Yeah, and uh, against a Shaman, uh, you can kind of base this off of general mulligan strategies, whereas you'll keep Totem Golem, but you won't necessarily keep Abusive Sergeant mm -hmm. because it's weak on turn one because of the ping. Um, and also, it, a Flimpton Totem is not usually something that you keep in this matchup either uh, because you, you want to try and get that Totem Golem. So Dr. Hippie sort of factoring in mulligan strategies from Diz Demon, uh, maybe even how many cards he kept, even though you can't see it during the mulligan phase. You can see how many cards your opponent kept once the mulligan phase has ended. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite changes that we've seen. Uh, recently in Hearthstone, it used to be that the, the mulligan period waited. You, mm -hmm. know, you, you saw what your opponent played, and both players just sit there staring at one another, you know, kind of a game of chicken as they're trying to get their opponent to mulligan first because it gives them information. 
recently there was a change that now all the Mulligan visual uh, cues happen simultaneously. So once you make your decision, you just click the button and your opponent doesn't get any extra information. So if you're someone who's been roping your Mulligan phase out there, stop. <laughs> There's no reason to do it. Yeah, you still do get the information <laughs> of how many cards your opponent kept and how many they threw away. It just happens once everybody's selected. And this was actually an interesting decision from Dr. Hippie. He chose to go face with his Mana Worm, uh, which did set up the possibility for his opponent to get a kill on his Mana Worm without giving up his Argent Squire. He had also the option there of, you know, just attack the Argent Squire, miss two damage, but then there wouldn't be a uh, the ability for Diz Demon to make the play that he did now and keep the Argent Squire in play. Hmm. Yeah, now Dr. Hippie's faced with a little bit of a tough situation where uh, Flame Waker plus Coin and Arcane Missiles would, you know, most likely clear this board. Uh, it'd be very unlikely for it not to. A lot of resources need to be used in order to make that happen, uh, but I don't think you can really afford to buy, try and wait more time, like ping off the Totem Golem and wait an extra turn to go for this, because this matchup does come down to damage. Oh, this Totem Golem is... Oh, wow! Wow, that was huge. The Totem Golem surviving there, super unlikely that that happens. <laughs> and TJ and I have actually been playing a bunch of Tempo Mage uh, backstage while we were waiting this morning. It's actually the deck that I've been, I've been messing around in the most with recently, and we've both been turning to each other. And, you know, it's like, I had this many missiles, and th <laughs> then I put had this in play, and this is what happened. Yeah. And that's sort of what Dr. Hippie is doing in his head right now. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's a very risky scenario. You know, if That one in particular, though, he had seven, seven pings versus three health on board. Super likely he's able to clear. Uh, it does not work out from though, and that totem golem gets a hit in. Yeah. Uh, not the worst for Dr. Hippie. He will have to expend a ping here, but he would have been pinging anyway. So effectively, right. that makes him take three more damage. Yeah, given the scenario, it, it effectively is not a huge deal because of the specific contents of Dr. Hippie's hand. It's very reactive. Mm -hmm. So uh, this demon, though, needing to use Lava Burst to clear off that Flame Waker is a very big deal because it keeps him off of these Doom Hammers in his hand for several turns. Yes. And he'll be able to get those rolling and... Mages really don't have a w much, many ways to heal. Um, but, I mean, sometimes they can get Ice Barrier from Babbling Book, which which is a case. So a lot of times the, this ra this matchup does come down to a, a little bit of a race. And there is actually no mirror image as well in the hand from, or in the deck from Dr. Hippie at all. So that's another way you can sort of block some damage later in the game. He blocks a couple Doom Hammer hits, uh, which can buy you some very crucial time. So might be uh, a factor later on. And the Flame Strike uh, against the mid-range versions of Shaman is typically quite powerful, but against double Doomhammer aggro Shaman is much less potent in terms of swinging the game around. It's much more important for the uh, the mage to be able to actually put pressure on to close up the game before the damage from Doomhammer can do it for the Shaman. Mm -hmm. Dr. AP is still in a relatively good spot. He's healthy. He's managed to take control of the board which isn't usually too difficult as the Temple Mage, as long as you get some early removal. Diz Demon, the one who is sort of faced with difficult decisions here, uh, in those being when to start pushing damage to base, if he needs to start trying to remove some of the minions on the board, and actually going to go ahead and, and find a little bit of a middle ground here and uh, take some damage, remove, remove off the board. But that's a lot of damage that he's expended uh, throwing it to minions. And it's a significant amount of damage he took attacking into those minions as well. Four from the Azure Drake, already down to 17 life. And Dr. Hippie has a pretty big hand uh, that includes Archmage Antonitis. And that is a, uh, a very, very powerful card in terms of generating additional damage when your opponent is at such a low life total. Mm. Yeah, so another interesting turn for Dr. Hippie. Uh, he can just play out his minions, Flame Worker, Colt Sorcerer, and leave the healing totem up because he does have Archmage Antonitis with those cheap spells. But I, I figure you might as well just get rid of the healing totem because it gives a target for Flame Tongue, it gives a target for Abusive Sergeant. And uh, he might be able to make the read that uh, some of those cards are dead in his hand. The second Doom Hammer has been in the hand for a while and will be in the hand for a while. Yeah, and I really like this play from Dr. Hippie here. Uh, specifically, he's creating a board that his opponent's Doom Hammer cannot easily deal with, getting some damage in. And his hand is, is chock full of just kind of clunky, expensive cards. You know, he has Flame Strike, he has Antonitis. And now this demon plays this Feral Spirit. Uh, it's just going to get swept up in a Flame Strike potentially, uh, and allow Doctor Hippie to get even more damage in. I mean, this game is looking 
almost unwinnable at this point for Driz Demon based off of the hands that we can see. You know, it's he still has a chance if he draws burn after burn the next turns, but really all Dr. Finney needs is a single burn spell, which he can guarantee next turn with Archmage of Tinnitus and Arcane Blast, even if he has to Arcane Blast his own minion, if Driz Demon weren't, weren't to play anything. Uh, so it, it's going to be a really rough time for, for Driz Demon. And we've seen this game go kind of how the, the Tempo Mage games versus uh, versus Shaman very often do go. The uh, the armor up is pretty powerful here. He's able to get himself uh, potentially out of range of burn, but that's not going to be able to race the fireball generation of Antonidas. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> he, he has yeah. to kill Antonidas, He'll too. To that's kill the thing. Antonidas. <laughs> and he's going to be a fireball here, and then Antonidas that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> Hello, wow. <laughs> Dr. Hippie, uh, he was on the receiving end of the emotes yesterday in this match versus Like a Faust, and Diz Demon realized doesn't even have a way to deal with the Archmage in Tinnitus. Just going to go ahead and concede that one. Dr. Hippie taking a crucial win with the, the Temple Mage early on. Yeah, that can be a tough matchup. Uh, a little bit of a clunky draw for Diz Demon caused him to suffer a bit, and uh, Dr. Hippie was able to capitalize. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to move into game number two right after this. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your, your team. Are all your teammates French? Yeah. It's a full French team. France has had a lot of great players. Yes. Uh, what's the competitive Hearthstone community like? Each month in France, uh, a great a big tournament played on stage at Paris. Most of the French players are really close. And I think in the next year, a lot of French players perform well in tournaments. I think the French players are testing a lot, a lot of matchups, a lot of tech. It still don't, doesn't really pay off, but it will soon enough. Are you going to be the, the player to, to put France on the map? I hope so. Uh, you have a competitive background in other games. I played a lot to StarCraft 2. I reached uh, Grandmaster League, and I really think that helped me to improve in uh, Hearthstone. In StarCraft 2 and in Hearthstone, you really need to sync to every one of your moves. I think that really helps. Diz Demon battling through. He's also battling against the dankest timeline of both returning championships players making it to a finals. Yeah, absolutely. We already have uh, George C., who uh, came back from last season, Dr. Hippie from the winter season, and Dr. Hippie trying to repeat Handsome Guy's performance mm -hmm. of losing uh, in the finals and then coming back to claim revenge on uh, his finals opponent at BlizzCon. It's a stat that I like to jokingly throw out there is that 100% of players who have finished second place at a championship, when they returned, they won. That's true, I suppose. It's Handsome Guy. But now, now it's, we're, we're, it's going to be put to the test. It's going to be put to the test, and Dr. Hippie has the 1-0 lead over this demon. But he's got to win this and beat George C. to make that statistic a reality. The prophecy. Shall it come true? We'll find out. And now it is Rogue versus Dragon Warrior. Dr. Hippie, the only player to bring the traditional mid-range aggro style of Dragon Warrior to this tournament. Uh, very much fallen out of popularity uh, in recent months. Yeah, and it struggled for him yesterday. He went up 3-0 to zero against Like a Baus in that series and ended up going all the way to uh, game number seven after losing three in a row with the Dragon War. Was finally able to pick up a win, but it was down to the wire. And Diz Demon running a uh, pretty standard version of Rogue for nowadays. I, I guess Rogue is sort of in this, the stage of of evolving, but uh, this is usually the list that I'm used to. You have to run a charger, and he has South Sea Deckhand in this this list as well for that a little bit of extra oomph. And Dr. Hippie picking up a Nazoth's first mate. Cardi kind of like they had last turn. Uh, here, he's actually, I think, debating the merits of Nazoth's first mate versus just using his hero power. His opponent will be able to potentially hero power and just kill the first mate. Um, and decides to go on the aggressive, recognizing that he wants to put the pressure on in this matchup. And he has a hand that's going to struggle to do it. 
Double four drop, double eight drop is not what you want to have in this deck. Not on turn two. <laughs> Definitely not on turn two. Maybe on turn eight. Yeah, that'd be great. Because then you could have the option. Like beautiful. Oh, but he picks up the perfect card on turn three. Fierce Monkey. And going to go into the tank a little bit. Also, it doesn't even have a dragon. So e even if he gets to turn four, he might not even be able to play Twilight Guardian, which will most likely be the better turn four play over Korkin Elite on an even or empty board. So definitely not a great start for Dr. Hippie. And look at this hand from yeah, Diz Demon. this is a monster of a hand for Diz Demon. He's going to go ahead and just ah, this backstab plus SI, taking down the monkey. And this is really going to... Okay, the... the uh, Alex has champion there, a uh, nice draw for Dr. Hippie. Not what he's look necessarily looking for, would have loved a dragon. Though, this demon has Shadow Strike. He has an answer to the Twilight Guardian uh, between that and his weapon. So, you know, with this slow start, Dr. Hippie is definitely looking like he's going to struggle in this game. You sort of need to pressure the rogue early with the Dragon Warrior, or else uh, the matchup starts to uh, swing pretty heavily into the rogue's favor. Uh, back when the old uh, Miracle Rogue was being run, where it didn't run Crossing Adventures, it ran Violet Teachers, it, it it couldn't all in as well, and it didn't get going as quickly. Uh, those rogues were had t some struggles against the Dragon Warrior. But nowadays, uh, the rogue gets off to a much quicker start. They can all in quicker. They can present bigger threats earlier in the game, and it, it makes it a lot better in, in this particular matchup. And here, this demon is likely concerned about the possibility of Dr. Hippie playing a Blackwing Corruptor the following turn, his best possible play on five. He, so there's less incentive for him to try and protect specifically his three health minion in the SI agent, because uh, he has the possibility of, say, coin, eviscerate, Edwin, which would make a, a pretty big Edwin and allow him to keep his, uh, his SI agent on the board. But that does run the risk of running directly into a Corruptor. But even if that happened, he would be able to fairly easily... Uh, if you could go ahead and Saucy Deckhand. All right, so the Deckhand plus Weapon is going to take out the Corkron. So that was an 8 damage Corkron. And this Demon just getting really aggressive here. He's going to go ahead and Cold Blood and then coin out the Edwin. So keeping the Eviscerate in his hand for burst damage and getting an 8-8 eight, eight Van Cleef. Yep. And, and there is there is no Corruptor here. There is the Alex as a champion for Dr. Hippie. He can remove the SI agent without taking any more damage from it, but there's no answer to that Van Cleef right now. Yeah, this really shows me that Diz Demon understands the matchup because uh, Warriors nowadays, they won't keep executing. They won't keep executing against Rogue. And it actually might be becoming right to keep execute in this matchup because of um, how they how the Rogue usually wins, and that's by making a big bank leaf or a big questing adventure early on in the game. Uh, a lot of times in this matchup, I, I watch and I think, well, if the Warrior just had execute here, he'd be in an okay spot. He'd take a lot of damage, but he'd be in an okay spot. Uh, and so Diz Demon, knowing that this is how you win. Going very aggressive with your cards early on is is going to have a pretty big edge. Yeah, well, this is not an okay spot for Dr. Hippie here. He has the ability to Shadow Strike this down with his hero power and just get 15 damage to the face of Dr. Hippie uh, with still no answer to this board in sight. And now that Dr. Hippie will most likely lose his fourth game <laughs> of this tournament with Dragon Warrior, how much he's he's regretting the choice of being the only player to bring it. I mean, he can't be feeling good about it, not not after the results he's had so far. Uh, there is a blood to Icker, and not going to be followed up by an execute, but the armor up will keep him alive from just Van Cleef. Uh, unfortunately for Dr. Hippie, that Eviscerate is waiting in the hand of Diz Demon to end this game on this turn. All right, well, Diz Demon showing sort of the power of Rogue. And he did have a reasonable hand early on, but like we said, recognized the win conditions in this, this matchup in particular, and takes game number two, ties it up, one to one. And I think that game really illustrated some of the reason why we've seen Dragon Warrior struggle recently. Its strengths generally lie against decks uh, like Aggro Shaman, like Zoo, that have small minions and don't really have great ways to deal with its mid-sized to big minions. And you know, there he just kind of stumbled out of the gates a little bit, had a inconsistent draw, and nothing he was able to do to come back against the rogue.
All right, well, we'll see who's going to break the even pace in game number three right after this. Для меня это новый опыт, новая страна. Я никогда раньше не был в Америке. Новые знакомства. Это довольно весело. Happy to be back. So you finished second place last time. Second place. Is this going to be the time where you come back and win? Are you a player that uh, likes to get emotional when you when you play Hearthstone? We know from last season you're a pretty calm player, but ha has anything changed? Do you still think about the game in the same way of just trying to not really let people get into your mind? Even if you win, are you going to cheer? At least a smile. I'm quite scared, Brian Kibler. Terrified. He's Horrified. a he's a frightening individual to interview. <laughs> Are you just scared of silence? You just can't handle an awkward silence? I can't handle it. Is that why you just keep talking? I just keep talking. Oh, okay, that explains a lot. Are you scared now? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, well, we have seen the Rogue from Diz Demon and the Tempo Mage from Dr. Hippie each take down a game. And uh, once again, we saw the Dragon Warrior deck struggle. Yeah, and that, that seems to be the story of Dr. Hippie's list here. Um, yesterday, he had a lot of leeway. He had four games to win with that Dragon Warrior. And he's going to queue it up again. He's going to try and get it out of the way a little bit earlier. And he finds uh, the probably the best matchup out of all the matchups that Diz Demon has. And that's the Agro Shaman matchup. It's the matchup that he did manage to find a win against Laika Baos yesterday. Yeah, a big part of the popularity of Dragon Warrior uh, came from the fact that it was very effective in this matchup historically. Uh, Rosti, uh, the Spring Championship, was a player who really popularized the deck. And when some people initially saw it, they're like, oh, you're playing this because it's better against you know, Hunter. You want to be able to be more aggressive. And he's like, I just think it's better against everything <laughs> compared to the old Tempo Warrior style decks. And, and it turns out that uh, it was kind of a better version, in particular in this matchup. So, Yeah, you look at the popular decks back then. You had Agro Shaman. You had the, the old Tempo Warrior. Um, uh, back then, you had a lot of a lot more rogues, and that version of rogue didn't do as well. So you, you had a, a really great feel for the dragon warrior, but it's starting to get phased out. So will Doctor Hippie be able to find a win against what is probably the best matchup for the deck in the field? His hand here looking a bit better. He has you know, at least early game play and some interactivity, which is cr crucial in this particular matchup. And Diz Demon with a hand that. Franco looks like garbage. He has very little he can do in the early turns of the game. Uh, and, you know, Dr. Hippie looking to capitalize on this stumble. A fairy dragon, an excellent draw for Dr. Hippie here, allowing him to actually get on the board when he was going to otherwise be a little bit slow. I don't know if it's that great of a draw, though. I th I, I'm going to be... I think I prefer the Blood Decker here. Sure. Because then that sets up for a coin into Twilight Guardian next turn, that being his only dragon. True, though if he does play the Fairy Dragon here, he has potentially the ability to coin out a Corruptor later, and Corruptor is quite strong, and able to also keep the Blood to Icker to enable the Execute as well. I do Fair agree true. that both both potential lines are uh, are quite viable, and Dr. Hippie does choose to go with the Blood to Icker, keeping that op option open next turn for the Twilight Guardian. This, is, this does, though, play uh, sort of have the worst effect against the play of Feral Spirits from Diz Demon next turn. Because he can't really, he can only train into one. And you know, you can go for the Twilight Guardian. I, I mean, I guess it's okay. Twilight Guardian is still really powerful. Yeah, the Quentin to Guardian here does leave him without very much to do in the following turn as well, is the problem. He has two fives, and he'd love to be able to coin five into five, but now is kind of committed to this play, I think, because he doesn't have anything that's particularly effective against his board this turn. And we will see him trade into one of these Feral Spirits 
and this demon left with just two mana next turn thanks to the overload doesn't really have a great way to get through this. No, not at all. Flame so Totem won't get through it um, very much. Uh, Argent Squire really not that powerful onto the board because it just get traded into by Nazosphorus Mate plus the weapon attack. So uh, again, a, a really rough spot. Uh, maybe just Totem up his best here to try and get that thing from below a little bit cheaper. Flame Totem would serve the same purpose, but I feel like that might have a little bit better use later on in the game. Yeah, the, to the, the Flame Tongue does also get uh, two damage on whatever attacks into the Feral Spirit, which could be relevant if he's looking to potentially take down the Guardian with a Rock Biter. Uh, but I imagine we, we will very likely just see the hero power here from Diz Demon. Though he is considerably behind, so I don't I don't mind the, the, the Flame Tongue here. Yeah, he, he just wants to ensure, you know, he, he feels like he's in a bad spot, I have to imagine, given this uh, this game state. And Woo. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was exciting, Sir Finley. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I suppose it's getting ahead and getting the pressure is much more important than holding on to armor up. And that Fire Blast is, or Lesser Heal, both pretty excellent here. The, uh, the, the Fire Blast would allow him to easily take down the 4-3 with his face and the uh, the Nazoth's first mate. I was kind of forget that guy's name. Like, what's that guy? The Rusty Hook guy? Nazoth's first mate. And this also saves damage on his Twilight Guardian. So he's able to take out the uh, Flame Tongue Totem at very low cost to himself, which is really not what this demon was hoping to see when he played that last turn. He also holds on to the Execute, which is important. He did have you know, exactly the amount of mana to be able to use the Execute and save the four damage on his face. But one thing that will lose him the game is if he gets blown out by a large minion, whether it be a Flame with Faceless or even Thing from Below. And now we have Corruptor potentially available to just take out this Thing from Below. The uh, Rusty Hook plus Sir Finley plus Corruptor can kill that five health minion. It's a lot of damage. It does though. use a little bit of, of damage to his face, and he has to be wondering what's in Diz Demon's hand, because the fact that Diz Demon has played so passively in the early turns has to make Diz Dr. Hippie wonder, you know, is this just a handful of Lava Bursts and Rock Biters? <laughs> in fact, it is. He draws a Doom Hammer. That is a ton of damage that's going to be headed straight at the face as soon as it can be. And Dr. Hippie does have the ability to uh, say Blood to Icker, Execute, and play Fairy Dragon here, or Ping plus Execute, and he's act that's what he's going to go ahead and do. All right, well, Flame Faces will potentially punish him in the future uh, if that were to come out now that Execute is gone, but he does have now uh, okay ways to uh, deal with a lot of the rest of the board, and he's still relatively okay if an AoE spell were to come out. Uh, we do know this even runs Lightning Storm, which is a card that he was apprehensive about even when building his decks. And you said he regretted it at, towards the end when he saw everybody yeah, else's lineups. Yeah, the field here uh, has been far less concentrated with decks like Zoo, which have previously been very popular at a lot of championships. Uh, last weekend, we saw a, a significant decline in Zoo from the preliminary, though both players in the finals were playing Zoo there. So I, I think that it's possible that D Demon looked at that and said, okay, well, these are the successful players. Even if the overall metagame wasn't very Zoo heavy, mm -hmm. it's possible that uh, the field would emulate what these players' decisions were. Yeah. All right, so Dr. Hippie going to go with a, a value-oriented board clear. And uh, this is interesting because... He saw the Lava Burst onto the Twilight Guardian last turn, mm -hmm. and so that might indicate that there's some kind of AoE spell or you're just trying to hedge against it. If this even rolls a Spell Power Totem here, he could swing the board a lot. But, man, his hand is so awkward because he, he doesn't have much, very much stuff to play. Yeah, that Overload from the previous turn, keeping him off of the Flame with Faceless, plus Maelstrom Portal this turn. It feels like he has to Maelstrom Portal here especially now that he's used his mana on the, on the totem and finds the Arcane Anomaly, new card. Gonna buff it up with Rockbiter Weapon. Oh yeah. <laughs> Takes down uh, that Azure Drake, but if that had been a spell power totem, it would've been a full clear for this demon. Would've been a full clear, and also that Arcane Anomaly can get pretty snowball-y. Of course, Dr. Hippie does have a nice way to deal with it, and he's starting to push quite a bit of damage and, and get that pressure rolling. Yeah, this so. This is a situation where 
Dr. Hippie is just so far ahead, and this demon doesn't really have the tools to come back, at least with the hand he has right now. If he had, say, a lightning storm in his hand and uh, picked up spell power, he could happen to clear the board here, but he finds healing totem, and that's not going to do it. I believe that there is, in fact, enough damage from Dr. Hippie to just close things out the following turn. Wow, and that is big. He finds a win with even admittedly from him, his weakest deck. And even though he had to take a loss to do it, now he's still going to be up two to one in the series and have some of his stronger decks remaining. I believe it's Druid and Rogue are gonna be his last two decks, which I, I still think puts him in, in a decent position uh, to to take the series. But it's gonna be tough that Aggro Shaman is still in the pool of decks for Diz Demon. Yeah, the Aggro Shaman is definitely one of Diz Demon's strongest decks. This was its worst matchup in Dr. Hibby's entire lineup. Uh, so ha having it fall here does leave it available for the future matches, and he still has a couple of strong decks remaining as well. All right, we're gonna see if Dr. Hippie can bring it closer to the finish line in game number four right after this. So what, what kind of stuff do you like to do besides play hard stuff? Do you have any hobbies? Table tennis and football. Table tennis? Yeah. I've played the uh, French uh, Nationals. Oh, wow. A long time ago. A long time ago? How old were you when you competed in that? I was 16, something like that. Do you still play a lot? Do you have a... Yeah, I play at home for fun. Who do you play against usually? My brother or my father. Are they really good too? Yeah. Did your father teach you from a young age? Yes. So is your family supportive of what you do in Hearthstone? Do they support you playing all the time and trying to be competitive? Yes, 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 support me. I think it helps you a lot. It's just better to have someone which is supporting you in addition to your teammates or your friends. They, they know the game and they like it. Oh, they play Hearthstone as well? Yeah. Do you ever give your dad false tips? Yeah. <laughs> you troll your dad? Hey, Dad, you should put Boogie Monster in all your dicks. It nearly won that last match. Boogie Monster's a big deal off that mulch. Actually, just died to an Arcane Giant, but it was exciting, briefly. Had a moment in the sun on the championship stage. Boogie Monster died to a free card. It's true. <laughs> well, Boogie Monster was a free card because he came off of a mulch. Whoa. So The Boogie Monster it's Paradox. Only fair. The only Boogie fair. Monster Paradox. Even if it's free. Not good. <laughs> Uh, maybe one day. Maybe one day Boogie Monster will shine. World Championship in 2019, Boogie Monster will win. I think that it'll be rotated out. The World Championship in 2017, <laughs> the Boogie Monster will win. All right, well, it will be Dr. Hippie with his Druid deck. Uh, important to note, he's playing the traditional token Druid, much like George C., uh, with a much more defensively oriented game uh, with the Ancients of War as his top end. And that can come in, come in very, very handy in this particular matchup. Oh, yeah. Uh, nobody really wants Earthshock anymore unless your name is I Kill You. And so, and there's very a, a huge lack of silence generally across the board. So unless you're playing against a class that has hard removal, then you're going to be in a pretty good spot once you can get to that Ancient of War turn. And since a lot of the Shamans here are aggressive, Hexes haven't been in, in really much, many of the builds, so... It's interesting to see that both players who did choose to play uh, Token Druid in this event uh, advanced one to the finals already, and one uh, is on the cusp of reaching the finals in Dr. Hippie. The Malangos version was sort of the the new hotness uh, as after it performed so well on the ladder for a number of players, reaching uh, High Legend, including number one in the hand of Muzzy, uh, but hasn't really been... Is it really like a better version of the deck? It's, it's not entirely clear in the tournament setting. It's really not, and I don't think this has even been a good indication of which one is stronger. Even though both players with Token Druid have advanced, I still think the Malagos one is is pretty good. There were, uh, if you look at Dr. Hippie and George's lineup, the one thing that they do have going for them, though, is they expected more non-Malagos Druid, so they put Mulches in their deck instead of the Double Feral Rage, which, which became quite standard. And that has actually given them an advantage. So, 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 sort of unintentionally, since nobody else has mulch, yeah, the, the, the mulch has given them sort of a little bit of an advantage. The, yeah, the ability to answer opposing arcane giants has been pretty huge for these players. 
uh, as well as just other big minions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, since the Malagos Druid doesn't really run many big threats, if you can mulch one of them, that gives you a lot of breathing room. But George and Dr. Hippie have won most of their games by getting ahead early and not giving up the board. And right now, he's not ahead. Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, no, he's not. Swipe will clear off much of this board, but it's a decision to swipe the Flametongue Totem or swipe the Tuscar Totemic. Uh, Flametongue Totem uh, might have more value in the long run. Also, leaving the Tuscar Totem at one gives him the option to hero power next turn. And we see a coin into Thing from below, going to protect that Tuscar Totemic from a hero power. Uh, though Dr. Hibby does have a mulch that he can use, as we just mentioned, you know, a very crucial card for dealing with big minions that could otherwise be problematic. Well, here's a big minion. It's caused me some trouble. Yes, it is. All right, so uh, mulch plus hero power is the play that stands out to me uh, at the moment. But he also has the ability to just, if he wanted to, innervate into a tree. Yeah. Uh, that does potentially eat the opposing board along with some additional damage. But it's also, you're, you, you sort of want to play Ancient War in this matchup when your opponent doesn't have minions. Because right. they're, they're, deck is full of a lot of spells and just straight up damage. So if you clear the board first and then use Ancient of War, you can a lot of times catch your opponent off guard and make it so it's harder for them uh, to deal with that Ancient. So um, he could also go with Violet Teacher plus Mulch and leave the 3-1 up. Violet Teacher, Innervate Mulch and leave the 3-1 up. But then he wouldn't be rolling into Ancient of War next turn, so... Yeah, Dr. Hippie definitely deep in thought over this decision. A lot of options available. Uh, the most, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the most straightforward one looks to be the play he's going to make. Mulches the thing from below and his hero power, I imagine, will take down that totemic. A Oasis Snapjaw. Whoa. You know, ashes to ashes, things from below to Snapjaws. Is that how the, the saying goes? Uh, yeah, something like that. Oasis Snapjaw has the coolest golden animation. I wish, like, the camera was kind of on us right now. He's just like, you know, <laughs> Our, our, you can just hear the, the, the teeth clacking, and now mm -hmm. I need to go see my dentist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well. Dizdemon just going to go ahead and set up his Doom Hammer here. And as you mentioned, uh, the Ancient of War, much better when you clear your opponent's board and can stop your opponent's aggression, specifically from this card. Oh, Doom yeah. Hammer represents so much of the damage potential of the Aggro Shaman deck. If you're able to uh, brick wall it, or at least a lot of the damage is able to do, uh, with the Ancient of War, you can put yourself in a much better position to survive that onslaught. Yeah, so even though he's floating a mana, I feel like Dr. Hippie's going to feel like he has to go with the Ancient of War this this turn. Uh, if he Violet Teacher's Wild Gross, he can Ancient of War, or he has the option to Yogg-Saron with the Innervate the next turn, but hasn't really cast that many spells. And Yogg-Saron against Shaman, it doesn't take the burst out of their hand. Right. So it's not necessarily as good. Uh, if Yogg-Saron could steal cards... It can, sometimes. Well, steal cards from your opponent's from your hand. hand. Uh, with Not just copy them, well, if they actually have, steal them. <laughs> if they have a Sylvanas in play, you can get them Astral Communion. Oh, yeah. So you give them a Sylvanas. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is going to be Rockbiter. Ooh, and a second one picked up for Diz Demon. So while this big tree will absorb a big hit of 10 damage, there's a lot more where that came from for Diz Demon next turn. Yeah, this is, looks like it's, <laughs> as quick as it's been, looks like that's probably going to be Diz Demon tying up unless Dr. Hippie could pick up a miracle from this Azure Drake. He is going to die from the damage that's I don't even know what it could be. An Arcane Giant, that is not it. Mm -mm. He's really gonna go rough. Ahead and, and Hippie's going to go ahead and Wild Growth here. Wants to get to the possibility of Yogg-Saron early. Uh, needs to just give him a little bit of extra breathing room potentially. But Rockbiter plus Lightning Bolt will tie the series for Diz Demon. We're now in a best of three. Indeed. Best of three. Uh, coming down to uh, pretty even decks. Uh, but we'll have to see. But yeah, that's sort of what Agro Shaman does. And it's been a traditionally weak matchup unless you can get on the board really, really early as the Druid. And Diz Demon's going to tie it up. Yeah, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, that Agro Shaman deck, one of the strongest in Diz Demon's lineup. Not a surprise he managed yeah. to pick up a win there. Uh, now it will be a Rogue off, it looks like. We got two Rogues, uh, I believe a Hunter and... Uh, a Druid. Druid. For, oh, yes, yeah. the Druid have just played. <laughs> My brain's like, what's yeah. the other deck? Oh, it's that one. <laughs> the one he's playing right now. All right, well, game number five is going to be coming up right after this.
So, um, are you and, and Naaman close? You know, he, he beat you in, in winter. Отчасти благодаря зимним чемпионатам мы с Наймоном очень сдружились. Он мне очень помогает со всем. То, что он меня выиграл в финале, никак не сказалось на дружбе. Does he ever bring it up in conversation? Ну, мы хорошие друзья, так что такое случается часто довольно. В принципе, я тоже могу сдачи дать. Я знаю там некоторые фишки. <laughs> you can't tell me. No. Uh, you beat Naaman at Star Ladder. Does that sort of give you the edge in your mind over him? Naaman doesn't have edge. Naaman doesn't have edge. But does this demon have edge? That's the question that right we're going to get answered here, Brian Kibler. Yeah, right now, no one has edge. It's two to two mm -hmm. in this series. And we've got the Druid and Rogue versus Rogue and Hunter. My thought is that the the Hunter is actually probably the, the better deck, it, given what's remaining. The fact that both players have a Rogue. Mm -hmm. Hunter's usually pretty good there, though this is the uh, a little bit different style of Rogue than some of what we've been used to. Hunter has been for performing pretty well mm -hmm. across the entire tournament. Uh, even some of the players that have lost have been eliminated. If they had Hunter in their, their lineup, it, it tended to uh, take wins pretty easily. So uh, I, I would tend to agree. And Druid, we saw struggle a lot at America's last week. It was one of the weaker decks in a lot of players' lineups because people knew that everybody was going to bring Druid, mm -hmm. and they know pretty much exactly what type of Druid they're going to bring. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see exactly uh, how the decks line up in the finals, if we get to see a Rogue Mirror matchup. And if we get to see a Rogue Mirror matchup, that one's pretty tough to call as well because the Rogues are so different. Yeah, they have very, very different builds of the Rogue decks. Uh, Dr. Apis is more sort of the traditional style of, uh, of Miracle Rogue, really leaning on the, the Auctioneer package and the burst damage from... Uh, the Leroy plus Cold Blood and everything like that. He does have the Singleton Argent Squire to give himself a little bit of uh, better early game. Uh, but then there's the the questing adventurer question. Yeah, you know, who's uh, who's quest? You gonna give me a quest? What's the quest? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably to pick up like droppings in the ground. That was most of the quests that I did when I played WoW. Mm, yeah. Though I hear Legion's great. I hear it as well. And I've experienced it as well. What are you playing most these days? What's your character? I actually just role play as a questing adventurer. Oh, so you just you just walk around to people with yellow, you know, question marks above their head and say, "Give me a quest." I pick up quests and then I eat a bunch of cheeseburgers so I get bigger. Oh, it's a dad bod plan. <laughs> yes, we're in a quest for a dad bod. All right, well we are into game five, and it will be druid versus rogue here. All right, well, I, I actually would think that the Questing Adventure version is actually better. Mm -hmm. um, a bold call, but there's a couple of tools in the other Rogue that aren't quite as good. So I think that Dr. Hippie probably found a matchup that uh, he, he wanted a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say. So uh, he's got a decent hand, too. Being on the coin gives you options with Van Cleave. He's got Tomb Pillager, which is one of the most important cards to have in the early game against almost any class. Yeah, Tomb Pillager is particularly nice when you do have the coin because you can coin out a Tomb Pillager and, well, if they kill it, you got another coin. Just back where you were. <laughs> and it's a 5-4. Yeah, it's a, it's a big, big minion. You know, there's the four damage threshold uh, is the point where both Feral Rage and Swipe uh, end up taking it down. But Feral Rage requires some damage, and Swipe is pretty mana inefficient. You're just trading your turn for their turn, and they get to go and start with a new coin. Mm -hmm. And Diz Demon, though, with a pretty slow draw, no wild growth, no real early action. He's got a handful of reactive cards, and that's not the position you want to be in against Rogue. Oh, no, not at all. And uh, his plan most likely is to hope that Dr. Hippie misses his drop on this turn, and he's able to ramp up with Meyer Caper and try and really get going with his hand. But uh, I can imagine Coin Tomb Pillager is going to come out from Dr. Hi Hippie here, and that's really going to put a wrench in the plans of Diz Demon. Yep, the Tomb Pillager Thank does you. come down. And now it is Demon, who would love to take that uh, proactive turn that you mentioned of Mire Keeper 
Oh, it looks like he's just going to do it anyway. He's going to let this uh, let this sit in the board, perhaps recognizing that if he gives his opponent a coin back, he could see something like coin Azure Drake and be right back where he started. Mm -hmm. All right. So looking at the options here and the overall game plan from Dr. Hippie, uh, this, we talked about his deck. He doesn't have the questing adventures. He's got the more traditional rogue that has, uh, it's got a, a the Violet Teacher as well as the little bit more early game with Earth Ring Farseer. So Edwin Van Cleef is sort of the only minion he can go all in with, unless he's confident, like Leroy Jenkins sticking onto the board for a turn with Conceal. So, oh wow. I, I like this from, from Dr. Hippie here. The backstab plus Cold Blood plus Edwin. He's creating two big threats here that does Demon, he's playing Druid. It's very difficult to answer even an individual large threat just efficiently on one turn, let alone two. Mm -hmm. And you know, he can perhaps swipe down the Tomb Pillager. If he didn't have swipe here, his only real answer is something like Feral Rage Face Tank 9. So I, I definitely like this from Hippie, especially because after the attack here, he has the option to just conceal the Van Cleef for next turn. Yeah, he could, even, he could even play, because he gets the coin here, Leroy, Leroy coin, conceal, hit you for 12, and just push so much damage this turn. So he is taking the most aggressive possible line right now. Uh, does pick up an Azure Drake, though, so you know, I, I see him kind of ratcheting back a little bit, not necessarily going with the full burst plan. Well, I don't know, because Azure Drake, uh, yeah, I guess Azure Drake's just really good. If I, yeah, I mean, it's... Even just concealing this, too, though he picks up an Auctioneer, so I think there's a good chance we may see him hold on to that Conceal, uh, given that it uses Coin and Conceal, which is so powerful with Auctioneer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's exactly what happens. Dr. be changing gears a little bit there. And he can clear this with, say, uh, actually he's got a full board clear available with Wrath, Living Roots, plus a Feral Rage. He takes damage doing that. But he's using a lot of spells. He's getting closer to Arcane Giant. He's got Moonglade Portal heal back up. So he's also taking a pretty significant amount of damage, though. Yeah. Uh, having to Feral Rage and Face Tank one of these is pretty brutal, and leaves him at just 14. And we see Hippie building up quite a bit of damage in his own hand. He has that Leroy. He has Eviscerate already, and will be going into a Auctioneer turn where he'll pick up a lot more fuel for the fire. He might feel like he needs to use this Feral Rage to gain health a bit later. So he's going to go with the Azure Drake and remove one of the minions on the board. But if he does this, is he close to dying? Uh, he's very close to dying. Uh, yeah. So if he removes this, then there's going to be Azure Drake, Leroy Jenkins, which is, uh, that's 10 damage. The dagger up would be 11. The Eviscerate would be an extra 5, so that'd be 16. So not quite. Yeah, not quite lethal here, but... This will allow Dr. Hippie uh, to conceal the Azure Drake as well if he goes to the Auctioneer turn. And it will be Auctioneer into coin. And we'll see what he picks up from here. If he finds a preparation, he does not. But a, a preparation uh, would allow him to keep the chain going. He finds Backstab, though. Oh, that's huge. That is a huge draw for Dr. Hippie there. Backstab not only draws him another card, but takes this Azure Drake off the board, leaving Diz Demon with absolutely nothing in play and just 14 life staring down just an almost insurmountable board. Yeah. He has the ability to heal back up with that Maelstrom Portal, but unless Maelstrom Portal finds, like, Sunwalker here, He's, he's really going to have nothing to defend himself against Dr. Hippie's Onslaught next turn. Yeah, the Moonglade Portal. Oh, that's what I meant. What yeah. I call it? Maelstrom Portal. Maelstrom Portal. I've seen too many of those. <laughs> trust me. Uh, PTSD <laughs> for Kibler on Maelstrom Portals. Uh, yeah, Moonglade Portal. Uh, Moonglade Portal could pick up, like you uh, mentioned, something really impactful. He's actually going to go with Azure Drake here. Oh, he, he's able to use the Azure Drake Feral Rage. Yeah, the Feral Rage to gain eight life. It's more life. Gives him a bit more of a buffer. But 22 now, a preparation for Dr. Hippie. Uh, that's going to give him a lot more reach here uh, in terms of his ability to generate more damage this turn. Actually, doesn't, it doesn't influence it too much because he doesn't have another Eviscerate to go with this or another Cold Blood. Uh, so he has eight on board, 14 plus five. So, so he has 19. So actually just out of range. Yeah. I, so I think he would want to go with the Fanonize here to be more mana mm -hmm. efficient. Uh, because he, he basically has one draw with the Eviscerate. He would have to draw into exactly Cold right. Blood, uh, almost. I, I think exactly Cold Blood mm -hmm. and, or Eviscerate to actually win from that case. And uh, having one draw is very inconsistent. So going to go with the more mana efficient play, go with the more consistent line. 
And that eviscerate, it's not going to be any more damage. Oh, and picks another up a conceal. conceal. So he's oh able to my. SI this down, this push eight tough. more damage, and then uh, that auctioneer is going to keep hiding. Even throws out the Argent Squire to join the party as well. <laughs> Get I, out there. I have stealth and divine shield. You ain't got nothing on this. No. All right, so I don't really see a way that this demon can come back from this one. He can get a big miracle going with Gadgetzan Auctioneer. Maybe even get an Arcane Giant out this turn if he gets a really crazy sequence of draws. Hey, but that doesn't do die. anything. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, even an Auctioneer this turn has been vastly out-miracled by Dr. Hippie already. He is just too little too late. Dr. Hippie has said more things through <laughs> Valera's emotes than you said in his entire interviews. Uh, and Innervate finds Wild Growth. Moonfire to the face is going to send a message. <laughs> We're, we're going to keep going. Second Moonfire. I agree. That is incredible. Two damage. Will it be enough? No. No, the answer is that it won't. Damn. It's going to keep going, though. Going to keep going. If he picks up second Feral Rage. I concede. All right. Well, he picks up Concede. He picks up Concede. Picks up Yogshron at the end. Not going to uh, make a difference in this matchup. But yeah, Dr. Hippie takes a 3-2 to two lead. Yeah, he has just that uh, Druid deck remaining that has to win against one of the Hunter and Rogue from Diz Demon. All right, we're going to see if Dr. Hippie can close it out and make a repeat performance in the Grand Finals. We're going to move to game number six right after this. Welcome back, everybody. About to jump into game number six of the series, the semifinals between Dr. Hippie and Diz Demon. Dr. Hippie's just one game away. Yeah, looking to go back to the finals, where he found himself in the winter season against his now teammate, Naaman, uh, hoping to repeat Handsome Guy's performance of uh, coming back and taking the title. Yeah, and another huge deal would be both players that returned to a championship that competed in previous seasons would have made it to the finals, which yeah. is huge. Uh, it just goes to show you sort of the consistency uh, of play from, from these two players and just how impressive that feat actually is oh, moving forward. Well, it will be the Druid Mirror be match, preserved. and this is an interesting one because it's not quite a mirror. Dr. Hippie is playing the more proactive, token-focused build, uh, while Dizdima is playing kind of the new school Druid deck with the Malagos Burst plan. And uh, exactly how these two decks line up, I'm not totally clear because uh, we've seen mostly the token druid deck kind of fall out of favor, at least on the ladder, in favor of, of Malagos uh, since that deck did come into popularity. Well, I mean, like most of the druid matchups, a lot of it comes down to early ramp. Uh, whether, no matter what deck you're playing with druid, if you can ramp up early and get big stuff out faster than your opponent, you're most likely going to have a good shot. Uh, no, things to note is the differences in three drops, whereas Dr. Hippie has a mulch and Diz Demon does not. So that can play into effect considering that Diz Demon has a limited amount of uh, threats in the deck. Uh, Dr. Hippie might be able to capitalize on that. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's going to be tough to say neither player has an excessive amount of ramp at the moment. Mm -hmm. yep, my thought, obviously, as you mentioned, the, the wild growth is probably the, you know, in, in many cases going to be regardless of, of the structure of either deck, uh, one of the, the major factors. But uh, I think that if both decks sort of operate about the same uh, power level, my inclination would be that the token version probably has a bit of an edge because it can do more powerful, proactive things faster. And the Malagos version is building toward this huge end game that is more difficult for decks with answers to deal with in a lot of cases, but this isn't a matchup of decks with answers. This is a matchup of decks that are kind of trying to do their own thing, mm. and their their answer just happens to be, well, a, a 10 cost old god in Yogg-Saron. Mm. Yeah, and being able to be proactive in a mirror matchup a lot of times gives you a little bit of an edge. I think maybe the one exception there is like Shaman, where the mid-range Shaman sometimes has an edge because of their powerful AoE spells. But in a lot of situations, the, the faster one of the two usually comes out on top because eventually you're going to ask a question that your opponent just doesn't have an answer for. I would not describe most warrior matchups as proactivity. Well, yeah. <laughs> warrior matchup, it, it just 
sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. I mean, it, which which is faster, an Azoth deck or a removal deck? <laughs> they're, they're both like the same speed, just one has a, a better, I don't know, it's, it's like tough to How say. quickly can you get to the monkey? <laughs> and do you even play it when you do? <laughs> how fast can you slow down? What is your tank up APM? Like, how quickly can you actually just pass the turn with out doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Last but, night I clocked out at six tank ups per minute. But uh, Dr. Hippie is the one on the board faster with ramp twice off of Meyer Keepers. Uh, Does Demon finds his own ramp? Well, Dr. Hippie finds a Raven Idol, which could give him potentially some more options. I think if he's in this position, perhaps digging for a Nourish is attractive, but he also just has an Azure deck he can already play. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we're starting with Raven Idol first. But, uh, oh, wow, okay. okay. This, this allows him to have more information about what his hand is going to look like because he's drawing his first card, then can make his decision from Raven Idol based on information. If he figures out, okay, the only thing that I might get here that would change what I play is Nourish. You know, maybe he doesn't even want to play a Nourish if he gets it. He could have played a Force of Nature if he hadn't played that, uh, that Azure Drake here. But may just go back to digging with another Raven Idol. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know if Force of Nature is going to be good enough. This is a token right. druid deck, so it's a little bit better. It's not full token, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't run, say, Savage Roar. So you can't make as good of use as with the tokens as you would in other matchups. But I think Dr. Hippie realizes that what he really needs right now is stuff to put on the board to apply pressure. And he doesn't guarantee that he gets even a remotely okay spell with his second Raven Idol. Yeah. So he might as well just get the card that's going to give him pressure moving forward. Yeah, I mean, look at Dr. Hibby's hand. He has a bunch of effectively burn spells. He has two swipes and a Feral Rage and just wants to put these Demon on a clock. Uh, I believe that if the game goes long enough, the Malagos version does have an edge because they do have that super powerful end game in terms of the Malagos burst. They have the ability to have these auctioneer turns as we're, we're seeing from Diz Demon uh, setting up right now. But uh, Dr. Hippie is, is better equipped to end the game quickly and that's what he's trying to do right now. All right, so Dr. Hippie has a really great swipe target this turn, but uh, he, maybe he's looking at Ancient of War is going to be a better play, but this is hard to miss up. And actually, yeah. Dr. Hippie is pushing a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that's incredibly relevant because outside of Moonglade Portal and, well, I guess Druids do have a lot of ways to heal, but if they're using those, like, Feral Rage to, ah, I don't know. It, it's, I, maybe the this damage Emperor doesn't look, matter. I was going to say, this Emperor looks super attractive. Is this just lethal for Dr. Hippie here? He has Feral Rage for four, Swipe for five. That is. That is just lethal damage. Dr. Hippie has that burst. He didn't need that force of nature. He's just able to finish the game on the spot right here and book his ticket to the finals of the Europe Summer Championship. So we have both players that have returned to the championship that competed in previous seasons are going to battle it out for a spot at the World Championship, and Dr. Hippie makes it to a second finals. The only player that's done this handsome guy, and he went on to win. Is it gonna be the same story for Dr. Hippie? Not a bad story to have. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad story to have. My statistic, will it come true after all? I mean, even just making it to, even making it to the championship a second time, mm -hmm. not many players have done that. Making it to the finals a second time, only one player has done that. And will he be, the second player to win with the second appearance in the finals. We'll find out soon. Yeah, so Dr. Hippie books his spot in the finals against George C. And to get a few words with Dr. Hippie, we have Raven standing by on stage. Thanks a lot, TJ. I am here with the second time finalist, Dr. Hippie himself. So first question, were you confident going into this matchup overall? Do you think you had a good lineup versus your opponent or was it a bit shaky? I think that Лайнап Джордж Си немножко сильнее моего, но не намного, так что шансы довольно хорошие. I apologize. I will have to translate the question. Okay, oh, he he thinks you're talking about George C's oh, lineup. No, the yeah, the previous match. He's talking about он он говорит про лайнап Дис Димана сейчас. Он тебя спрашивает. Uh, were you confident going into this matchup that you just won? <laughs> no, it's okay. It's not a problem. Uh, его она была немножко похожа из к моему, потому что у него была рога тоже, так что я думаю, это было примерно 50 на 50 лайна. Well, he thinks his lineup was measuring approximately 50-50 to his lineup. Okay, so now I will ask you, how confident are you going into the matchup for the finals, which will be versus George C? 
Ну, чувствую себя хорошо, но у него немножко лучше лайна в тюрьме, но я довольно хор... уверенно себя чувствую. Well, he's feeling that uh, Georgia C's lineup is a little bit better, but he feels very confident as well. Okay, well, good luck in the finals. Again, congratulations to making it. And we actually have TJ and the boys ready just for a little bit of a pre-show to get you warmed up for the finals of Dr. P versus George C.